He can't let you go scot-free because that would be unjust and he doesn't want you to be punished. Do you know what he did so that he could reconcile those two different things? Send us back to another human. Send us back as another human? Yeah. Uh, as, are you talking about reincarnation? Yeah. Hands up here if you think you're a good person. Put your hands up if you think you're a good person, please. Anyone here a good person? Hands up if you think you're not a good person. Ah, so you're not being entirely honest with me. So are you a good person? Okay, would you like to come and talk to me about that? This is your prize. I'm going to give you this. So come and talk to me. What's your name? British. British. Let's give him a round of applause because yes. he stood up on the on the box. Basically, <laughs> his comment is that I said he's going to talk to me, uh, and I've asked him if he's a good person, and we're going to we're going to talk about that. If that's okay. So, British, would you um, agree that it's best to be honest? Yes. Okay, you said yes, that's good. Most of the time, okay. In this conversation, are you willing to be honest with me? Because I might ask you maybe slightly difficult questions. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, and are you here with anybody else, Richard? Does anyone else come here with you? Okay, all right. Richard, are you uh, willing to be open-minded and listen to other people's ideas? Is that okay? Of course. Okay, brilliant. He said, of course. So, Richard, you're going to answer the questions, but I might repeat it so that people behind you can, can hear it as well, okay? British, are you a logical and a rational thinker? Do you use logic and ration? Yes, most of the time. Brilliant. Most, it said most of the time. Okay. The, the time when we don't, that's for love, isn't it? That's when we become irrational. <laughs> I like that. That's great. Uh, what I'd just like to say is, uh, you'll answer the questions, British, but, uh, but I might I might um, repeat what you've said so other people can hear. If you're listening in to British, tell me that, uh, prove to me that he's a good person, um, then, uh, then please listen to the questions and apply them to yourself. So, Richard, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you some questions. When you've proven that you're a good person, I'm going to give you this £5 note. But, Richard, if you fail the test, if you fail, we're going to give you prizes anyway. Is that okay? It's all right. So, Richard, I want to ask you, first question. In your whole life, thinking back as far as you can, how many lies would you say you've told in your whole life? Just put a number on it. Million. Million? Okay. And what do you call somebody who's told a lie? A liar. That's exactly it. If I, if I lied to you, you'd say, Bob, you're a liar, wouldn't you? Okay, so thank you for that, Richard. Okay. Right, think again, Richard. As far back as you can remember, have you ever taken something that didn't belong to you and it doesn't matter what the value was? You've never taken anything. Sometimes we have a little problem understanding this. I'm going to help a little bit. Um, if you've ever like watched a um, an illegal DVD or uh, streamed music that you didn't pay for. Oh, okay, so, so, so you have taken... Just a small thing, but it's okay. So what do we call somebody who takes something that doesn't belong to them? A thief, okay, that's correct, isn't it? Thank you for being honest with me. I should have said at the beginning of this test, by the way, British, but it may have put you off. But I failed this test, so I'm not judging you, by the way, okay? British, in, your, in the whole of your life, when you've become surprised, maybe you've stubbed your toe or something, have you ever said, oh my, and used uh, God's name uh, at that point? Or have you, have you, have you ever said, ah, and, and use Jesus' name when you become surprised or hurt by something. Use curses. Use what, sorry? Curses. Curses, okay, curses, okay. Um, uh, that's not exactly what I'm talking about. So if you've never said, oh my G-O-D or something like that, you said that, okay. So that has a special word. Do you know what that's called? No, it's called blasphemy, okay. So it's we take the name of the God who made us and gave us life um, and allowed us to enjoy great weather like this and being out in Leicester, which is a fantastic place. But we use his name as a swear word, and he treats it, treats it very seriously, okay? British, um, here's, here's last question for you, okay? Um, have you ever uh, looked at, uh, at uh, a woman who wasn't your wife and maybe had thoughts about her that were sexual? Uh, thank you for being honest with me. That's called, uh, God calls that adultery of the heart. So, British, I'm doing the good person test with you. I'm talking to you uh, from the Ten Commandments. We've looked at four of them, and you've told me uh, yourself that uh, you're a liar, you're a thief, you're a blasphemer, and in your heart, at least, you've committed adultery. Is that is that true? Okay, well, thank you for being completely honest with me. Right, British, and everybody who's listening, I want to, I want you to imagine now, at the end of your life, um, that you're going to meet, you're going to meet with God after you've died, and the same things that you've told me now are true will still be true then. So he, you're, you're there before him, and you are a liar, you are a thief. You have a uh, blaspheme that you've committed the adultery. Is he going to consider you, he who's perfect, is he going to consider you, British, as innocent or guilty? Guilty. Okay, you're being honest. That's rational. That's logical. Thank you for that. And if you're guilty, is he going to punish you or set you free? Depends on what's his body. Depends on what, sorry? What's the God's body? 
what his what his punishment is. Okay. He didn't make man perfect, so it depends on what his bar is. Now. Okay, okay. So uh, Richie's made a good point. He said that we're we're not, we're made by God and we're not perfect, and it depends on what his bar is. So the questions that I was asking you, they are all from his bar. In, in, in the sense that he commands us not to lie, not to take things, not to blaspheme. Okay, those are all written down in his code. So we know what his bar is, and in these cases, you've told me that you've fallen below those bar. And another way of describing it is that we've broken his law. So if we are lawbreakers and, we, uh, and, and, and the judge knows that we've broken his law, will he call us innocent or guilty? Guilty, yeah, okay, thank you. And if we, oh, we've done this already, but if you're guilty, uh, and, the, and, and you're in front of a judge, does he punish you or set you free? That makes logical sense, doesn't it? Okay. And the Bible describes the, that punishment as hell. Okay, have, you, have you heard that con heard that concept before? Would it concern you then that in the scenario that I've described to you, you would have to go to hell? Maybe. Well, it, it, yeah. If you're maybe tending towards yes, then that will make, that will make logical sense to me because that's not a good place, is it? And that's um, that's not the place that we would want you to go. So we have this problem, British. You and me and everybody who's listening, if they're being honest, are going to be in that position, and we are all guilty because we've all lied, we've all done those things. But I'm I want, I'm addressing uh, addressing you, British. Okay, God loves you, and He doesn't want you to be punished. Um, but He has to do justice because He's perfectly just. So He has this problem. He can't let you go scot free because that would be unjust and he doesn't want you to be punished do you know what he did so that he could reconcile those two different things send us back to another human send us back so send us back as another human yeah uh, as, are you talking about reincarnation yeah okay so richard says that to do that to, to deal with our, our badness he sent us back to reincarnation. Um, that, that's a really interesting uh, concept. I think that uh, maybe a lot of people would think about that. But then how would we, in another life, in these lives that we live, we were always doing something wrong, wouldn't we? We'd never make up for the wrong that we did in our other life, okay? So I want to share with you, Ritish, what, what God actually did so that he could be just and loving at the same time. 2,000 years ago, Ritish, and we're nearly finished here, um, he came down himself, uh, the life that he lived, was perfect. We looked at uh, four of the Ten Commandments, but all ten of them, he didn't break in thought, word, and deed, and he lived a perfect life. And at the end of that life, which was perfect, he laid it down voluntarily for you and me. And he took the punishment in that death that you and I should have, and then he raised, uh, was raised to life. Now he offers free forgiveness to you and me if we're willing to accept it. And it's just because he's paid the punishment for us. It's like when you're in that courtroom and you've been convicted, and the fine is a million pounds and you can't pay it. But somebody comes in who's really, really rich, Bill Gates comes in, he pays the million pounds for you. Then the judge can say, ah, oh, British, you can go now because it's fair and just and loving and kind because not only is it uh, the fine been paid, but he paid it for you. Okay, okay so British, thank you for listening to me. Um, did what I say make sense? Does it, does it explain that? Okay, all right. And British, if, um, if somebody was offering you a million pounds, when would you accept it? If somebody said, I want to give you a million pounds, when would you take it? Yeah, would you take it straight away or would you wait three or four weeks to come back and find it? Straight away, of course. That makes perfect sense, doesn't it? So God is offering you free forgiveness for your sins right now. And you have to do two things. A present underneath the tree. If we leave it there wrapped up, it's just a present. Okay, but we need to take it and unwrap it. And the way we do that is for repenting. Literally, it means turning away. It means I know that I used to do those things. I know I used to steal and take those and lie and break the moral law. But now I don't want to do those things anymore. It's not saying I won't do, but I just don't want to do those things anymore. And I have to believe that what Jesus did for us is sufficient to pay for our sins, to pay the fine for us. Does that make sense? Okay. And if you would take the million pounds today, then logically you should take you should take that offer today, British. Right? And I, I really hope you do. Now, Ritish said he was going to prove to me that he was a good person. Did you prove you were a good person, Ritish? No, he did not. So I'm not obliged to give this to you. But I'm going to give it to you anyway. So, Ritish, I want you to take that, OK? Yeah. And, the reason, and the reason why I'm giving that to Ritish anyway, even though he failed, is because it's a, it's a display of grace. You didn't deserve the five pounds because you failed the test. But I'm going to give it to you anyway. We don't deserve forgiveness, but God gives it to us anyway. So every time you look at five pound note, British, for as long as you can remember, I want you to remember that God is offering you free forgiveness. Okay, we've got some other prizes, we've got some other stuff to give you as well, uh, which we want to give you with our love. Please take that. And everybody who's been listening, first of all, let's give British 
a hand, a big hand. Yeah. 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 It's quite easy doing, doing what he's done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you in a minute, just, just a second. But listen up to, to, please, pay attention to what we've said. Listen to, apply it to yourself. Yeah. 